Okay, sorry. On behalf of the Roctes Group, I am pleased to welcome you at the Today Web Seminar with focus on fiber optic distributed technology for them and hydrostructure monitoring. Before starting with the seminar, some, bri some brief information. You should hear my voice through your PC speaker or headset. To ask a question, you can use the question panel located on the right of your screen. You will receive an answer in the question panel at the end of the presentation or individually by email. Later in this week, you will receive a copy of this presentation and the related data sheets. Let's go now through the contents of this seminar. We will start with a general introduction on fiber optic distributed technology and why they are and shall be used in the monitoring of them and other structures. We will then show you some application examples where you can see the real implementation of our ideas and instrumentation in real large scale environments. We will conclude with your questions. Note that not all the questions will be answered at the end of the presentation, but will be individually answered by email. Why traditional sensing is limited in large structure? Because it is very difficult to define a priori where a damage can occur. It is therefore difficult with a network of traditional sensors such as piezometers and temperature probes to provide a good structure coverage with high probability to detect a failure or an event. By construction, by construction calculation, it's almost impossible to figure out where possible failure can occur. The SmartTech fiber optic distributed system can give you the possibility to sense everywhere, providing a nearly full coverage of your structure and answering the difficult question of where to locate the sensor. The main aims to in developing and implementing a fiber optic distributed system to monitor a dam or an hydrostructure is the detection of seepage, internal erosion, hot spot and leaking cracks. Beside the direct dire detection, the monitoring, the monitoring system can offer an effective analysis of the evolution of the detected anomaly and a way to define a reasonable threshold and trigger alerts in case these thresholds are overcome. Moreover, fiber optic system can be easily integrated with already existing Roctest traditional monitoring system. Last but not least, they offer the unique capacity of locating precisely the event using only few sensors. Let's speak now about the fiber optic distributed sensing technology. With the fiber optic distributed technology, you just need to deploy a single fiber optic cable that will act as a, an active sensor. Every segment of the cable is acting like an independent sensor and replace a traditional sensor. This technology can answer the double question of where something is occurring and how big is the induced variation. They can in fact provide both the localization and the magnitude of the ongoing event. They offer as well the capability to scan the whole length of the sensor just in a single scan that can last from few seconds up to minutes, depending on the required performances and the project needs. The working principle relies on the injection of a pulse of light into an optical fiber. When traveling inside the fiber, Light is divided in different spectrum components that start traveling in the backward direction back to the reading unit that generated the light pulse. Through a dedicated receiving module, the unit is capable of collecting and analyzing the so-called Raman anti sox component that is sensitive to temperature variation. The system specifically developed for them and hydrostructure monitoring is capable of sending a pulse of light into an optical fiber and measure up to a distance of 5 km with the capacity of localizing an event with a precision of 1 or 2 meters. Of course, the system is capable of detecting both temperature increase and decrease.
The reading unit developed and provided in this kind of monitoring project is called Dite and Parse and offers the unique possibility to work over a wide operating temperature range. The unit can in fact work between minus 40 and plus 65 Celsius degree with a very low power consumption that is around 18 Watt when the unit is fully operative. A smart control system is capable of switching off the laser, setting the unit in idle state between two following measurements, thus allowing to decrease the power consumption down to 0.5 Watt. This feature led the unit to be very suitable to, use, to be used in remote and difficult environment and can be powered with a battery or with a suitable solar panel. The Dighton Porsche has an embedded channel multiplexer that gives the possibility to scan in series over four channels, each channel up to five kilometers with a sampling resolution of one meter. Each single channel can be configured independently from the other, thus assuring the right parameter setting. Smartac develops as well a range of distributed temperature sensors that can be used with the data and partial reading unit. In particular, two cables are normally used. A standard armor temperature cable with four optical fibers on the left, and the so-called self-heating cable on the right that beside fiber optic provide isolated copper wires for cable heating. The last but not less important component of the SmartTech system is the DiveView software that provides automatic handling of the acquired data. This software has been specifically developed to manage distributed data coming from the DiveTemp unit, provides system status, informing the final user about the status of each single component, reading unit, sensor and software itself. It has been developed to work continuously 24 hours, 7 days, without the necessity of an external operator. When configured, the DiveView software can trigger alerts to dedicated user recipient. Warning thresholds are set during commissioning phases. The software itself provides an easy remote access to the implemented monitoring system, offering the possibility of remote troubleshooting and offline data processing. As last option, it offers a friendly graphical user interface with data displayed on maps. The smart, the smart Tech Fiber Optic distributed system can work in two different configurations. The so-called passive method relies on direct detection of temperature anomalies induced by liquid spilling. The method is typically used when a gradient of approximately 5 Celsius degree between the liquid and the sensing cable can be assured. The so-called heat pulse method or active method is on the other end used when the gradient between the liquid and the sensing cable is negligible and smaller than 1 Celsius degree. In order to ensure a reliable detection, the sensing cable, and in particular the self-heating cable, is eaten up and forced to change its natural temperature. Heating is provided by flowing electrical current on the sensing cable. Current injection is controlled by a dedicated module that is part of the system when this detection method is selected. When forced to change temperature, the cable will need a certain time to arrive at the, at the asymptotic temperature, defined as temperature of heating and as well a certain time to go back in its initial condition. Studying the cooling down transient and the value of the maximum temperature reached during the heating phase, it will be possible to figure out if some events are occurring. This analysis is automatically carried out by the DiveView software and the detection algorithm is applied to all the points of the sensing cable. Let's go now through some real application developed by SmartTech in the last few years. The first project I want to show you is the CAB shape project in Iran. This project concerns the monitoring of a pump storage hydropower plant. The main aim is to detect seepage occurring at plinth level of the two water reservoirs, defined as upper and lower dam. Two independent systems were developed to monitor each of the existing dam. 
here you can see some of the pictures taken during the construction phases of the upper dam. On the left picture it's easy to, to see the plinth. The self-heating sensing cable was deployed all along the plinth on the dam and exit the dam structure on the crest opposite side where the cable enters. This kind of layout was selected with the aim to provide complete monitoring also in case of accidental cable breakage. It is in fact necessary to point out that in case of breakage, the SmartTech system can provide the data just up to the breakage point, leaving a blind zone. With the selected cable layout and with addition of an extra cable, it is anyhow po anyway possible to reach the breakage location from both sides, thus assuring data continuity in case of sensor failure. It is anyway necessary to point out that cable breakage is unlike when the structure is finalized. Cable failures typically occur during installation phases. In this project, the self-heating cable was inserted into a geofridge patch and fixed on the concrete plinth 15 cm below the water stopper structure. The cable inserted, inserted into this fridge was fixed along the whole length of the plinth with bolts that were separated of approximately 1.5 meter. Here in this slide some pictures taken, taken during the installation. On the left picture, the insertion of the self-heated cable within the geo fridge and on the right, the protection with the, a soft layer material of the geofridge bonded to the plinth. A dedicated control, loo control room where the instrumentation rack was located was specifically built on the crest of each dam. The rack contains a display, the DITEMP unit with the, its accessories, the server PC where the DiveView software is installed, and the heating module necessary to heat up the cable at scheduled times. All the system was plugged into a network stabilizer and UPS in order to prevent general functionality in case of power breakdown. Here you can see some plots from data acquired during test phases when heating the sensing cable. On the left plot, the raw data. On the right plot, the differential temperature measurement during heating. It is easy to figure out how the theoretical model is well proved by the real data. Some accuracy and repeatability tests were also carried out during implementation phases. It is possible to evince how the temperature resolution is in the order of plus minus 0 0.2 Celsius degree. The initial section showing higher deviation refers in fact to cable section that is not concreted and that is directly exposed to the environment. Another very similar project was developed in Laos on the Namgum 2 dam. The main aim was to prevent seepage at plinth level. For this reason, it was decided to go for the heat pulse method detection technique that offers a more reliable detection when the temperature of the sensing cable is comparable with the temperature of the water. Here are some pictures of the dam taken during the construction phases. A total of two distributed temperature cables were installed on the concrete plinth. Each cable was installed some 15 cm far one from the other in order to offer monitoring redundancy. A dedicated room was built on the crest of the dam with the aim to locate the monitoring instrumentation. In this picture highlighted in red, in red it is possible to see the path followed by the two sensing cables. Here in this picture you can see where the cable was installed towards the plinth and the water stopper.
As explained, the dedicated room was built on the dam crest to locate the instrumentation rack that contains the dive temp unit with the computer, where the dive view software is installed and the necessary heating module to heat up the cable. Here you can see some of the plots directly taken from the data analysis carried out during the dam impounding phases. Another interesting project was developed in Algeria. On the contrary, with respect to the two previously presented projects, this one relied on a passive detection technique. The main aim was in fact to study the thermal gradient within the different concrete layers and as well identifying seepage and water infiltration area at the low levels of the dam. Here are some pictures of the dam under construction. The sensing cables were deployed mainly on four vertical sections of the dam with the aim to have a clear picture of the thermal gradient induced by the water reservoir from the bottom to the top of the dam. The monitoring lines installed at very low level had the clear intent of detecting seepage to prevent structural failure. A dedicated room at the two of the dam was built with the aim to locate all the monitoring instrumentation. For this project, the DITEMP, not the ARSH model that was released just a couple of years ago, was coupled to a four-channel external multiplexer to switch light on the four independent sensing lines. Here a plot reporting the measured absolute temperature by one of the sensing lines. From this plot, the client's consultants were able to retrieve important information about the concrete behavior and the thermal influence of the reservoir on the concrete. The absolute temperature measured by the DITEMP unit resulted to be in good agreement with the temperature probes installed in the concrete and close to the fiber optic sensing cable. Finally, in this plot, it is possible to evince how the system reliably detected a water infiltration that, that occurred in a critical area close to the upstream wall. It, it is possible to see how the temperature dropped down, showing a thermal anomaly correctly detected by the system. One of the first dam monitoring projects implemented by Smartec was in Switzerland and more in detail on the Luzzone Dam, Canton Ticino, not far from Smartec premises. Due to some refurbishment works, the dam was increased of 17 meters to increase the reservoir capacity. The aim of the monitoring system was to provide the temperature distribution into a large concrete block during its setting reaction. The monitoring system was needed to verify and validate the numerical simulation carried out by the client's expert with the aim to avoid excessive temperature gradients and finally improve the knowledge of the dam behavior. Here it is possible to see the section where the sensing cable was installed. In this animation it, it will be possible to see how the thermal gradient change with the evolution of the concrete setting and the influence of the reservoir of the concrete block. The last application we would like to present concerns an hydrostructure located in Spain. This structure is mainly built to store water and in fact act like a water reservoir. Due to the desertic environment, water is very precious and the monitoring system was needed to prevent leakage. Due to the small gradient between the stored water and the sensing cable, the cable was in fact practically divided by the water just by means of a geomembrane, the active detection method was selected. Here are some pictures of the, of the reservoir under construction. And here are the reservoir ready to be impounded. Highlighted in light blue and pink, you can see the path followed by the two installed sensing line. 
The first line was installed at the bottom of the pool, while the second approximately at the mid of the height, where leaks seems to be more probable. Here a top view of the sensing cable layout. And finally the instrumentation rack located in a room specifically built in the nearby of the reservoir. On the right picture the debut software running on the server PC. These are just some of the projects that Smartech developed in the last few years. To sum up, we have demonstrated the suitability of the DITEMP system to detect anomalies such as seepage, internal erosion, hot spots and leaking cracks. We have demonstrated the unique advantage and capacity of the DITEMP system to sense everywhere, solving the problem to define a priori the sensor, the sensor network. The implemented project has proved the suitability of the system to withstand demanding environments, offering a cost-effective and permanent online monitoring tool. Thank you for your attention and see you at our next web seminar.